Hello everyone, it's Jan Bedell, the Little Giant Steps Brain Coach. Welcome back for this week's Brain Coach Tips. Today we're going to talk about autism solutions. It has been my privilege over the last 20 plus years to be able to help thousands of families incorporate the neurodevelopmental approach for life through Little Giant Steps products and programs. Parents have reported amazing results, which is wonderfully gratifying. My prayer is that you can see the same results through the information that I share here and want to share this podcast with your friends and family. So if you know anyone that has a child on the autism spectrum, I just ask that you would share this with them because God may be wanting to work through you so another family can get the help they've been praying for. No matter what platform you're on as far as listening to these, the unfortunate statistic is that 1 in 68 U.S. children has an autism spectrum disorder, a 30% increase from 1 in 88 just two years ago. This is according to the new report released by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. I'm assuming that you're listening to this because someone that you know or love has symptoms or has already been diagnosed with this disorder. You know, this disorder really evokes fear among parents. They fear for the child's future. They fear for what is the road ahead for them. And right off the bat, I just want to encourage you to release that fear. We actually have an ebook written by one of my associates by that very name, Release from Fear. It's an ebook by Ruth Young. I want to encourage you to get that and read it because you don't want to be consumed by fear. Fear is something that is definitely the opposite of faith, and God wants us to have faith. That's what pleases Him. So let's talk about these wide range of involvements and many different symptoms that get a child on. The spectrum. The good news is that with any symptomatic label, including autism spectrum, there is something that you can do to make things better, make the function better. But first, we have to look at the symptoms and try to find the root cause. One of the first symptoms that I think of is a disorganized brain. In our society, we're doing lots of things to keep our children from going through the steps that God designed for them to go through, the developmental steps that form the foundation for function. I've had several podcasts on this brain organization, so I would encourage you to go back and look at some of those because we are designed to go through certain steps. And if we don't, just for instance, being on the floor on our stomach, making sure those two hemispheres start to communicate when we start in cross-pattern movement, But even before that, getting our tactile system connected to our brain so we know where we are in space and so that our tactile system is working and functioning well. This is a big issue for a lot of kids, those tactile issues. If they have low language, oftentimes they're not speaking very much when they have this label. What we've seen as a root cause of that is low auditory processing. This is holding pieces of auditory information together. Sometimes they just can't hold those pieces together, so their conversation is off. They don't answer appropriately. This is a huge issue that I see with all children that I've worked with that have the autism spectrum label, is their processing is low. This is a really easy root cause to fix. It takes some effort for sure, But you can look at just simple little exercises you can do each day from between 15 seconds to 2 minutes of auditory practice to build that auditory muscle so that they can speak more. Now why is this really related to speech? Now sometimes the child goes to speech for learning to talk in longer sentences or or working on grammatical issues. And this is because they're processing more like a younger child. So the lower the processing, the lower the language. In other words, a one-year-old 
only has a processing of one, and they don't have much language. A two-year-old has a processing of two. They can hold two pieces of information together, and there's more language, and when they get to three, it pretty much explodes. So if you find that the child has low processing, which we have a test kit on littlegiantsteps.com that you can get, it's free. You just go and get the tiny tots, one, if they're not speaking very much, even though they may be a little bit older, get the Tiny Tots test kit because that's one that you can use with even nonverbal kiddos. And then look at the booklet that I wrote. It's called The Best Kept Secret in Education, Auditory Processing. This will give you games to play with the child to help their processing become higher. One thing that I found personally is the speech goals for my daughter were to speak in longer sentences but she could only process three and there's only so much you can hold in your short-term memory to be able to speak in a longer sentence and three is very is very low there are often anxiety and behavior issues that are on that checklist for spectrum disorder you really have to be very strategic in pretty much peeling the onion to try to find out where those behaviors are coming from or that anxiety is coming from. One of the things that causes these behaviors or might often cause it is metabolic issues. This is issues of the gut and just the chemistry of the body not working the way it should. If you're interested in a way to clear metals naturally, you can email me at info at littlegiantsteps.com and we can talk about some of your options, especially if you're close by in the Dallas area, there's more options available. And you may have already looked at diets that help the metabolic issues and eliminating things like wheat, sometimes dairy. The GAPS diet is one that you might be looking into. Many, there's many diets that help heal the gut. The one that we recommend most often is the Spectrum Balance Protocol Diet. Symptom that's on the checklist for this disorder is perseveration. This is endless repetitions on the same thing. They could be talking on the same subject, oftentimes just you know Thomas the Train and everything's about Thomas the Train and they can't really talk to you in conversational language unless it has something to do with Thomas the Train. It could be any subject. I'm just picking that as one because that, that one's one I have seen quite a bit. Other things that cause this perseveration are sensory dysfunctions. So the child could maybe flap their hands to the side or be too close to the TV. The root cause of this is the central detail vision not working well and the peripheral works too well. It's hyper. So any little distraction can pull their attention away and because they are so hyper peripheral they like to play with their peripheral vision that's why oftentimes they do the flapping the hyper peripheral picks up on lines edges and movement so they could even be walking a wall and just playing with their peripheral vision with stripes on the wall or pictures that are hanging there something like that but the flapping causes a endorphin to be released in the brain that you get when you run and that's the happy juice that you get when you run it's the feel, feel good and so because it feels good they do it more and then they do it more now some philosophies say let them do it because they need it but our philosophy is the more they do that the further away it takes them from reality and from you so we encourage you to distract them and stop the perseverating, stop the flapping. Don't let them get too close to the TV because that's picking up on that movement as well. So they may be playing with their peripheral by being too close to the TV. So you stop them and redirect them from that because the further away they get, the more development unravels. But you also have to treat the root cause of that. So in the neurodevelopmental DVD, there's something specific, there's an exercise specifically for that 
that helps you know how to work on that central vision so that it works well because it's it's almost cruel to take that away from them without fixing what's wrong. I also talk about this in podcast number 22 so you can get a lot more information there. Some of the behavior issues may be coming from problems with their clothes or tactile issues that they have. So if they're hypersensitive to tactile, that's just bothering them all the time and they're moving around all the time and being irritated. And so anytime that you have something that's just irritating you all the time, it's overloading your sensory system and you just want to strangle a cat or something. I mean, it just gets on your nerves. And when that's 24-7, it makes it very, very difficult to just cope with life. I'm talking about that, the hypertactile issue, in podcast number 21. So go back and listen to that. You know, I just had these short snippets of time to tell you about things, so I'm going to have to point you to resources here because this is a multifaceted topic and it's multifaceted issues that we have to deal with. One of those would be maybe being hyper-auditory. If they're hyper-auditory, sometimes they're just really loud all the time. This may be because they're trying to control their environment and be in control of that noise. So they get really loud. They could be very distracted by noise or just totally overwhelmed with noise. I had one little boy that was just on overload all the time because his hearing was so hypersensitive. In podcast number 20, I talk about how to work with that and help improve it just with things that you can get locally. Just by way of a story, I want to help you to know how strategic you are in this whole thing and how you can make such a difference in your child's life that has these spectrum issues. I want to tell you the story of Xander, who is somebody that I saw in Texas. Xander his parents heard me speak at a homeschool conference and they turned in a history form thinking that they wanted him to be seen in person right away. And then they decided that they wanted to use the early learning foundations that I created. So they picked level one because Xander was having trouble even remembering his numbers and letters at that time. So they picked that and then did that for about six months. They got so much progress, they were excited to be able to schedule an in-person evaluation because they thought, if we've gotten this much progress with just this generic program, we can't wait to see what it's going to be like when we get more specifics just for him. So it was interesting because I expected someone on the autism spectrum to come through the door because of the symptoms that I was seeing in the history form. And I asked the parents about many different things that were in the history when we had our parent consultation, because I worked with Xander first. And they said, oh yeah, he used to do that, but he doesn't do that anymore. Not since we started using the Early Learning Foundation. So I was very excited about that, where we can give you something that takes you through the developmental steps, like God's intended, puts in that auditory processing the auditory and visual short-term memory to help them with those areas and see tremendous benefits. So Xander had some symptoms like he had trouble coloring within the lines and that's often an indication that their central detail vision isn't working. He was a picky eater so his tactile system was giving him the wrong messages. His articulation was definitely an issue and his speech was interfering with his ability to make friends. Oftentimes you see this with Spectrum kids and you have to teach them to do things like if they're not answering the, a question appropriately, one thing that you can do is ask them the question and then answer the question right after you answer it and then ask them again. So you have just modeled what they're supposed to answer. This really is very helpful. So if you want to consider looking at early learning foundations, all you really need to know is what math level they're on because the neurodevelopmental part, the brain organization, 
the tactile and the processing is pretty much the same on the different levels but there's a different math level for level one it's more preschool level two is more geared toward kindergarten and level three actually is first second grade it brings them out ready to do third grade math but the main key of early learning foundations is the neurodevelopmental activities that you are taught on a website so that you know exactly what to do to help your child I've mentioned before that this is such a complex issue when the child is on the spectrum that you really have to dig in and peel the onion so some of the resources that we have for that are a number of articles that we put in a bundle some talk about the neurodevelopmental approach some talk about the just autism specifically and you can get those articles at littlegiantsteps.com on the store there's a bundle that's just free or you can go to the link that's on all these resources that I'm going to tell you about there's a book that I highly recommend it's called too wise to be mistaken too good to be unkind you can get that on our store as well and it's a story of a woman who researched a lot did a lot of different things but neurodevelopment was one of them and the child really did come out of the autism realm other resources are the neurodevelopmental approach book written by Linda Kane and the neurodevelopmental DVD that I created so both of those are on the store and that auditory booklet can really help you with activities to help their short-term memory we will have the link to the spectrum balance protocol diet as well and we'll put on here some information about in-person evaluations of course if we see them in person they get a program that's specifically designed for them not just a generic one like in early learning foundations that's one option and with each evaluation it's different than just going and getting a label somewhere and getting some general ideas of things to do we're going to give you a program that's specifically designed to work on each of these root cause areas to diminish those symptoms and hopefully eliminate them altogether another option if you're listening to this from a distance from the Texas area is a jump start for children that are six and under or an advanced brain training program that is for seven and up in this way we can work with you through a history form and information that you provide for us to give you more individual assistance on a program that's taught online so that you can know exactly what to do to help your child there's videos that tell you why you're doing things how to do it and then a video with someone doing it with the child so you know exactly what to do we've seen some great progress with these programs and if you're interested in that just review the information online and the links will be there or just go to littlegiantsteps.com and then you can email office at littlegiantsteps.com with any other questions that you have that's all the time we have today but I hope you will stay tuned where you will receive more brain coach tips to make life and learning easier until next week, it's the Brain Coach signing off and reminding you that neurodevelopment is a dynamic approach to life at any age. So think differently. The solution is not in the problem.